Hello, this is Jan from JC WebTech. I create videos with tips and tricks about Elementor and web design in general. Today we are talking speed. This is a very important topic because the performance of your website impacts its ranking, meaning the position in the searches. It does it both directly as it is now a ranking factor, but also indirectly as it increases the bounce rate. As people simply don't have the patience to wait for the website to load and they will bounce immediately. This is also particularly bad if you are running ads because you already paid for that click before the person just disappears. So did I get your attention? There are obviously many videos on these topics, but they mostly talk about caching plugins and optimization after your website is done. Here we are going to start from the beginning and do this right from the design up. I will teach you how to design and build an Elementor website that will already perform great before you even start with optimization and go deeper in those plugins. I will walk you through the process of building this site, but first let's pay attention on the design. You can see there is no full width picture. Staying away from the full width pictures in your design is also practical with the rise of big and ultra wide screens. I am using two fonts here. The font for the body has two variants, regular and bold. You can further improve your result by using only one font and try to definitely avoid more than two fonts in your web design because font uh, files tend to be very heavy and slow down your website. Now let's have a look at the actual website, but first you will need a solid web hosting. If you are on a shared hosting, uh, the performance might be inconsistent and probably rather inferior as it is influenced by the other websites that are hosted on the same server and you have no control about whatsoever. I am using Cloudways with its cheapest tier from DigitalOcean. Here and uh, the difference from a shared hosting was a night and day. While the cost is the same as the renewal of the shared hosting was even going to be. I have a link in the description for a free trial so you can easily make a copy of your website with their migration tool and see the improvement for yourself. If you want some extra oomph, you can choose Walter High Frequency instead of DigitalOcean for your server provider within Cloudways. Uh, so for the actual website, I am using Hello Team with a child theme installed to be able to add some custom code. I will link this entire child theme in the description, so just briefly. We are preventing any Gutenberg from loading on the front end, also Google Fonts, Font Awesome and Elementor icons, as they might be loaded on the front end and uh, they would slow down your website unnecessarily. This part of the code should fix images that don't have explicit width and height which will improve your score and reduce uh, layout shift. We are also removing jQuery migrate, so check if your plugin, some of your plugins you are using doesn't actually need it. In that case, better disable or delete this part of the code. Uh, we will remove emojis and uh, disable XML RPC, which is something you probably don't need. Oh, moving on, uh, I'm using Elementor. Elementor Pro, Steroids for Elementor and Styles for Elementor plugin. You will get by with Elementor free, but you will be fairly limited. So if you are on a bench about Elementor Pro, check out the deals in the description. You are not familiar with Steroids for Elementor. I will show you in a bit what is it exactly good for. Regarding the initial setup, you should be hosting your fonts locally. Then I like uh, to create global styles and colors uh, I will be using throughout the website while building. I also like to set order settings painting via style kit. I just don't understand why you cannot do this directly in Elementor. Uh, and uh, yeah, hosting your fonts locally is very important. 
The rest has little to do with the speed except saving some CSS size, but it improves the process for me. In the Elementor settings I activate the following optimized DOM output, improved asset loading, improved CSS loading and font awesome inline. With inlining the font awesome having the biggest impact. The others may cause some compatibility issues with some plugins or extensions so if you run into some weird behavior uh, just try to disable them. In Elementor settings uh, advanced tab I use Google font load uh, set to swap to ensure visibility of the text prior loading of the font files. Uh, then I like to disable everything I am not going to be using in steroids for Elementor just to declutter a little bit. Uh, you can check what those things do before you disable them and uh, you might happen to love it. We are also going to prepare the, our images. I like to export them from Figma in the exact resolution and aspect ratio I am going to need on the website. I also like to shrink them with this tool before uploading them to the website. There are plugins for it that do it uh, automatically but I just like the full control and uh, check the result before I proceed with uploading the image. Now with the initial setup out of the way, let's have a look at the actual process of building and structuring the page. First, we are going to need the header. I tend to use this simple layout on most of my websites. This is the logo on the left and standard menu on the right. So I won't use uh, two columns but I will set the widgets to inline mode and the columns horizontal alignment to space between. The real tricks come when we go to the tablet mode and mobile mode. First I disable the breakpoint for the menu preventing it from turning to hamburger menu. Then I hide it completely on tablet and mobile and use this icon widget that I link to a pop-up that I have prepared. This gives you instantly boost of 10 plus percent in the speed inside for mobile and also more freedom for designing the mobile menu. I will not show you the whole process of building the pop-up as it is quite straightforward but if you would like to see a tutorial on that leave a comment below. I also came across some concern uh, what is the implication of using the pop-up uh, for SEO but I believe if you submit the sitemap and link also to the other pages in your footer uh, you should be fine. Uh, Elementor is famous for its bloated code so we are going to eliminate that. There are three benefits of it for the score and speed. First, the size of the HTML file will be smaller and faster to download. Secondly, the browser will have less to go through while rendering it. And last, uh, Google Speed Insights directly care about the DOM size and lower your score for excessive amount of HTML on one page. Elementor actually issued a video how to do this by using their inline positioning of the widgets just like we did in the header, but we will bring it to another level using the Oboy Steroids for Elementor plugin. Big shout out to the guy behind this plugin, I will link his channel in the description so that you can learn more about this awesome plugin. So what is going on here? Uh, you can see there are multiple rows in this section. This is because we control the width of the column with settings that steroids add. So since all these columns are set to 50% width, they will stack to rows without the need of adding another section. For the responsive mode, you need to adjust the width by yourself. Here you can see there are two images, both set to occupy 50% of the horizontal space. So overall, instead of having up to three sections or using an inner section, we have one section and three columns I could go on with stacking the columns on top of each other, but I need to change the background so I need to start new section here. 
Another example is this call to action section. The heading and the text are just set to maximum width. The text is set to break into two columns here and the button is in line to sit next to these two. No wrapping elements needed. The creator of steroids for Elementor has an entire video focused on the widget stalker functionality, doing better job explaining it, so let me just sum it up and link his video in the description. Uh, first, uh, try to avoid adding new sections to create new rows unnecessarily. Leverage on the inline styling or set the widgets width with the widget stalker. And second, uh, use the widgets that resemble your desired structure, such as image boxes, testimonials, etc. Instead of building everything completely from scratch, out of basic blocks such as images and text and headings. I will conclude with some don'ts to keep your website swift that I don't really showcase here, but you should keep them in mind. So first, limit animations and especially avoid using them above the fold in your hero and header. Uh, second, do not animate your cookie bar or other pop-ups. Uh, but rather delay them after interaction if possible because Google might be detecting the page fully loaded only after this pop-up shows up that might be even delayed and your loading time might be unnecessarily very long. And last, uh, limit number of uses of plugins uh, especially those Elementor extensions adding another widgets to Elementor uh, and instead try to use custom CSS and some maybe some JavaScript instead to achieve your desired look and interaction and you can check my other videos on this channel how to do exactly that. And yeah, this is the final result on Google Insights for mobile and the result of GT metrics. And uh, let me remind you this is without any caching plugins there is some caching involved in the infrastructure of Cloudways, even with Varnish disabled, but we can definitely bring it further in some future videos. We are not trying to substitute caching here as it is essential for efficient use of your web server resources, but rather see this as a first step before you dive further that way. And uh, also keep in mind this is my approach, how I achieved those results and you might be able to come up with some different approaches or further improve what I'm doing and that is completely fine. Uh, and in some future videos we will have a look at uh, how to set up caching on this website and see how far we can push the performance of this Elementor website. So if you want to stick here for it, please hit that subscribe button below and also the bell button so that I can see you in the next one.